Thank you once again for joining me in another one of my videos. Today we're diving into the story of conquest, liberation and enduring faith. We're about to uncover the secrets of Lisbon Cathedral, a towering symbol of a city reborn from the ashes of tyranny. Imagine a time when Lisbon was under the iron grip of Moorish rule, a dark era where fear and oppression reigned. But then in a dramatic turn of events, the city was free and with that freedom, Came a powerful statement, a cathedral built over the very mosque that symbolized their oppression. This is not just any building, nor just a church, nor just a cathedral. This is a monument to resilience, a beacon of hope, and a reminder of the spirits of Christian Europeans who managed to reclaim their city. So join me as we journey through time and explore the epic story etched into the stones of Lisbon Cathedral or as the locals know it, C. de Lisboa. It's perched proudly in the Alfama district, famed for its trams and beautiful streets. This cathedral has seen nearly 900 years of history, and trust me, it's got stories to tell, from its origins as a fortress-like stronghold during the Reconquista to the layers of history you can literally see in the walls. Lisbon Cathedral is a place where the past isn't just remembered, it's alive. So brace yourselves, let's dive into the heart of one of Lisbon's richest parts of history. Now let us rewind the clock to the 12th century, a time when Lisbon was a bit of a hotbed of action. The city was under Moorish rule, but in 1147, thank God, everything changed. Enter King Alfonso Henrique. <laughs> the first king of Portugal, leading his forces to reclaim the city during the Conquista. After a fierce battle and a successful siege, the Islamist Moors, who had been nothing but oppressive and tyrannical for centuries, were finally ousted, and Alfonso Henrique decided to mark his victory in grand fashion by building a cathedral on the site of an old mosque. And thus, Lisbon Cathedral was born in 1150, standing as a bold symbol of the city's rebirth under Christian rule. For once, it was payback time for these southern Europeans, but it also was a time for celebration. Now, if you have the pleasure of visiting Lisbon Cathedral, you might notice it looks more like a fortress than your typical cathedral. And that's because it was designed with the defense in mind. The 12th century wasn't exactly the most peaceful of times, so those thick walls and solid towers were built to keep out any would-be invaders. They didn't want to risk the Moors coming back. The Moorish occupation of southern Europe was a brutal and oppressive time, often romanticized by woke idiots in the modern age. But the harsh reality is, for centuries, the native Christian populations lived under a dark, tyrannical rule. Women were often subjected to horrific treatment, raped and taken as sex slaves, their lives forever marred by violence. Men faced an equally grim fate, many being captured and sold in slavery on Moorish ships, destined to probably be castrated and a life of hard labour, far from home, never to see their homes again. For poor Christians, life was even more perilous. Unable to pay the heavy Islamic taxes imposed on non-Muslims, they faced a dire choice, conversion, enslavement, or death. This was a true dark age for the people of the Iberian Peninsula. So when King Alfonso Henrique finally drove the Moors out of Lisbon in 1147, it was not just a military victory, it was a deeply personal liberation. Building Lisbon Cathedral over the site of a former mosque was a powerful act of reclaiming their land, their faith and their dignity a bold statement that their culture had been restored. Now Lisbon Cathedral is Romanesque, which means lots of heavy stone, rounded arches and small windows, perfect for keeping things sturdy, but not exactly the best for letting in the light. As you step inside, you'll feel the weight of history in the air. The dark narrow aisles and the stone walls have seen centuries of worshippers come and go. But Lisbon Cathedral isn't just a relic of the past, it's a living, evolving building. Over the centuries, it's been added to, rebuilt and restored, especially during the Great Earthquake of 1755, which nearly flattened the entire city. 
After the quake, the cathedral was given a bit of a facelift, with some Baroque touches added for good measure. But one of the most striking additions came in the 13th century, the Gothic elements. If you look up at the western façade, you'll see a beautiful rose window, a real gem of Gothic design. And don't miss the ribbed ambulatory, which adds a touch of grace and elegance to the otherwise sturdy Romanesque structure. Now as we head inside, the nave is where our eyes are immediately drawn upwards by the soaring arches and the massive columns. It's a space that commands respect, if not total awe. Now I didn't get to see this bit, but apparently there's a gothic cloister and a courtyard connected towards the back. Now from what I understand, it's a sort of peaceful oasis where you can escape the hustle and bustle of the city and take a moment to soak in the serenity. Sadly, I didn't have access to it because I think it was undergoing renovations. What's fascinating about the cloister, from my understanding of having read more up on this cathedral since doing research for this video, the cloister is like a mini archaeological site. Over the years, excavations have uncovered bits of Roman, Moorish and medieval history, all tucked away within its walls. It's a real mix of Lisbon's past, all in one place. Now there's a spot you really shouldn't miss, it's the sacristy which is on the upper floors. This is where you'll find a small museum full of religious artefacts, including some other ornate vestments and a stunning 14th century silver monstrance. Now sadly, I wasn't allowed to film inside this museum, so any video that you do see was taken on the sly. But I think God will understand because for those who don't have the privilege of being able to fly to Portugal and visit Lisbon and then certainly paying to go into this cathedral, I think everyone deserves to see these things and it's one of the reasons I think sometimes these things should be filmed. I'm not a thief and I'm not planning a heist, so I think it's perfectly acceptable to film these things, although please don't get any ideas because <laughs> then it's on me. But just bear in mind, I thought I'd capture a couple of images, hence the reason for the shakiness. Now a beautiful stop is the Chapel of St. Ivo. This little gem is tucked away in the southern transept and it's absolutely stunning. The stonework is incredibly detailed and the Azulius, the famous Portuguese tiles, tell the story of St. Ivo, the patron saint of lawyers. Now it's a beautiful blend of art and faith and must see for anyone visiting the cathedral, especially if you're a lawyer, I presume. Now for those of you who love a good treasure hunt, the cathedral's treasury is where you'll want to be. Located in the upper levels, it's home to a collection of religious art, relics and other precious objects. Among these is one of the cathedral's most prized possessions, the relics of St. Vincent, Lisbon's patron saint. Now these relics were brought to the cathedral in the 12th century and have been venerated here ever since, but obviously it basically means no filming, hence I wasn't able to capture it. Now if you're up for a bit of a climb, I wasn't able to do it, not because I couldn't climb all those steps, it just simply wasn't open on the day that I was there, but sometimes the bell tower is open, but from my understandings of reading reviews, like all bell towers, it's a bit of a workout. But once you reach the top, you'll be rewarded with some of the best views in the city, and from here you can see the Targus River stretching out into the horizon, and the red rooftops of our farmers spreading out below. It's a sight that I'm told is worth every step. Past videos you've seen me climb bell towers, and in future videos you'll see me climb bell towers. I just simply didn't have access to it on this visit. Now one of the reasons many people visit Lisbon Cathedral is to touch the, the legends. Now one of the most famous is the story of St. Vincent and his loyal ravens. When his relics were brought to Lisbon, the tale goes that two ravens guarded them throughout the journey. These birds became symbols of the city, and you'll spot them everywhere, including in the cathedral. And then there's the legend of the Knight Templar who is said to be buried somewhere beneath the cathedral. Rumour has it that he was a protector of the Holy Grail and his tomb holds secrets that have been lost in time. Whether you believe in it or not, it's a story that adds an extra layer of mystery to this already fascinating place. And I have to say, thinking about the Knight Templar being buried under here made me feel a little bit like Indiana Jones, just wondering, do they really protect the Holy Grail and is there a chance of finding it? But the Grail cannot pass beyond the Great Seal. That is the boundary and the price of immortality. Now as we wrap up the journey through Lisbon Cathedral, I hope you've enjoyed this little trip through time. The building isn't just a place of worship, it's a living, breathing piece of Lisbon's history. From the beginnings of a fortress, to the, the reconquistas, to the layers of history that have shaped it over centuries. 
Lisbon Cathedral is a place that has seen it all, so next time you find yourself wandering through Lisbon's historic streets, be sure to pop by to take a visit. Take a moment to explore its nooks and crannies, soak in the history, and maybe even ponder a legend or two. Now until next time, keep exploring, keep discovering, and above all, keep wondering.